Hello and welcome to the LRM podcast, sponsored by Adrian Flux Insurance. I'm Martin Dominic. And I'm Steve Miller. And you join us for a chat about Land Rovers and everything to do with owning them. So then, Steve, we've had a couple of listeners' questions. Should we kick off with those? I quite like kicking off with listeners' questions. Yeah, it's good. It's good. We've... Surprise me, hit me. I don't know what they are. Okay, right. So, first of all, controversial one, potentially. Hi, hope all is well. I have a question for yourself and Steve to talk about on potentially on the podcast. What are your thoughts on straight through exhausts? Oh, okay. And he also jokingly says, go easy on that turbo. It might be worth carrying a spare. Very funny. Thank you for that. <laughs> if you have a spare turbo for your freelancer, you want to fit it. You got, <laughs> you got to dig in before you did. Then. Yeah, no, yeah, it, it, it spoiled the, the entire podcast by asking, having a dig about the uh, turbo. Ruined your fun already. Yeah, wait for it. And when you're finishing your project in your garage. I was saving that for a bit later. Yeah, actually, thanks, but, yeah. Yeah. I thought I'd just uh, spoil your fun as well. Beat me to the punch. Yeah. So, so straight for exhaust yeah, then, what are okay. you saying? Well, depends what it's fitted to. Yeah, it's a case by case basis. Yes. I think. So uh, there's a guy that lives near us or lives near me. Um, he has a TD5 Discovery, yeah. Discovery two, straight through exhaust, and he saw he, he saw he seems to drive everywhere flat out. Yeah. Black smoke, uh, popcorn exhaust, and it's really, really irritating. However. In the right environment, it would probably say it sounds all right, it sounds good, but it's an irritating noise because it's completely straight through. Yeah, I think the perfect compromise is so most exhausts, I think, correct me if I'm wrong here, but you have the big oval silencer in the middle, don't you? And then you have like a resonance box at the back. Yes, I would delete the big silencer in the middle and keep the resonance box because it just I don't know, it gives a bit more of a quality sound. I'd... Especially on a TD5, and possibly a 300 TDI. Well, a TDI. Uh, yeah, I agree with you, actually. I think uh, from both an outside point of view, so if you're standing and watching the vehicle go past, uh, a slightly muffled exhaust is better than a total straight through. TD5 sound brilliant with a slightly less restrictive exhaust. They do. Uh, they do sound good, and almost controversial but sometimes they sound better than v8 petrol no nah, no nah, they don't but okay they, they... Well, anyway <laughs> i just said it for effect but yeah no they right. are, are, are years ago well 10 plus years ago when i had my probably closer to 15 years ago now when i had my td590 it, will, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be you know I, I used to thoroughly enjoy the exhaust note of that and that was i'm pretty sure straight through with just a small box on, at the back um, and you also find that if you keep one box, regardless of the size, in the exhaust, you don't get a constant drone when you're at motorway speeds. It's that it's that drumming noise that you get at, at constant speeds. It, it's fun while it lasts. It gets on your wick if you're doing longer journeys. Does your head in? Yeah, just a no, constant it, like yeah. headache-inducing, like low pitch droning noise is just horrible. I think if you've got you know, reduce silences. So, you, again, keep the resonance box. But you just don't drive it like an idiot and you just enjoy it and just drive it normally. I think there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. The guy, like I say, the guy that lives near us, you can hear him from probably a mile away. Yeah. And it's just too much. But we were... if everybody drove a car like that, yeah. Can you imagine how busy and how noisy the roads would be? No one would ever get run over, though, because you'd hear it coming, wouldn't you? Mm. Yeah, you would. Yeah, but you'd hear everybody else as well. Well, true. just be too much. Um, there's fewer things uh, in my mind better than a TDI or a TD5 with a slightly naughty exhaust, really loaded up though, especially off road, just working hard and yeah, like yeah, that's oh, great noise. That bark you get out of a, a diesel, well tuned diesel, just fantastic. But then you could go and get an exhaust system from somebody like I don't know. Uh, Double S exhaust, so stainless steel sports system, or down at Demand Engineering, yeah, get one of his really stuff. lovely. Uh, is it Griffin exhaust as well? Yeah. So there's three people right there that you could go and get something that's still got the silencers, but they don't have so much yeah. muffling in them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, slightly less restrictive. Here's the thing then. So what about then? So TD fives often have, well, say, the catalytic converter. Yeah. Obviously, it's illegal, isn't it, to remove the cat? But 
you can get dummy cats, can't you? So the MIT inspector thinks there's a cat in it. Yeah. Which we not strictly the we can't con well we can't not condone them, but well, like people buy them, don't they? Yeah. The thing is, yeah. um, obviously, MOTs now, you've got that all emissions equipment that the vehicle left the factory with has to be there visually. So you can't just fit a bit of straight pipe where your cat should be because it should visually have a cat. However, if the vehicle passes emissions, passes if it's below its stated emissions limit, um, which is normally on a little plate under the bonnet, there's no reason that should fail. If it's visually got the emissions equipment there and it isn't course, yeah. smoking like a train and exceeding that emissions limit, it should still pass an MOT. It's a bit like uh, EGR blanking plates, isn't it? So you're not strictly allowed to blank an EGR, are you? No. But, but if the MOT in Smith is like the plastic engine cover on, say, a TD5 or yeah. 300 TDI, the engine the engine cover still in place, they can't remove that to see if it's there or not. No. And actually, when I, I used to be an MOT tester as part of my old job, and I would always stay as a, a note on the certificate, uh, something like engine covers and under trays fitted obscuring view of components because then so that does my head in on an mot for a car right so so when you when you get the engine covers fitted and unable to check yeah but that's every new car or every modern car has a plastic cover on, under trays that they're not going to remove yeah but why is it an advisor if it's a standard fit well because people might have tampered with the emission system yeah do you reckon the MIT inspector would judge the person bringing the car in as the likelihood of them messing with their car? Potentially. I mean, they shouldn't, obviously. But yeah, but... But they'll look at somebody and go, I reckon you've messed with this and dig a bit deeper. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Um, straight through exhausts. Mm. No. At least one small box just to take that raspy Take the off. edge off. Yeah. It's about taking the edge. Because let's be honest, especially when you're younger, you want, you want an... Even my V8 in the series I've got, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a, it's got, a, that's only got one silencer, but the, the silencer is huge and it doesn't sound verbally enough really, but I don't want to go too far the other way because then it would just get irritating. You see, when I had my stage one V8, which was obviously a 109 yeah. series three, that exhaust was totally original, had all the silencers on it and... I wasn't getting enough V8 goodness from it mm. for the amount of fuel it consumed. Yeah, <laughs> I wasn't. I wasn't worth. getting my money's worth in a in a. In a vo it wasn't very vocal, and I would have possibly thought about chopping the exhaust out of that just to make it a bit more. If you're going to be paying eleven or twelve miles for the gallon, at least hear it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> at, least, at least hear your money escaping out of the back. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, I don't know. For an off-roader, cherry bomb. In a, on a V8 at the very back, the the glass oh, cap yeah, silencers. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's like a real crisp, just throaty exhaust note from a V8. You see, what we don't know is this guy might be driving a two and a quarter uh, diesel. Oh, well, there is no, there's was... no helping him if no. that's the case. <laughs> <laughs> I always remember years ago when, when I was a kid, there was a farmer on the road um, who had a Series 3 truck cab. Yeah. And uh, the exhaust was obviously. The, the, standard exhaust was missing and he used a tractor exhaust coming straight out the wing yeah that was really cool yeah that sounded nice you know you still see it well my memory serves me right it sounded nice the um two and a, the two and a quarter and two and a half pre-tdi diesels were actually quite and even the 19j actually were quite sweet engines because they were indirect injection oh, okay. so you didn't get that knocky clattery noise oh. that you get from a tdi <laughs> yeah i know um I don't. I, I wouldn't be able to tell you what they were like with a sportier exhaust because I've never driven one. But mm. yeah, the um, talking of V8s actually going back to that quickly, I think V8s are making a comeback in a big way. Do you know why I know that? Because you've probably spoken to somebody that knows. Well, I went and bought a pair of new old stock. Series three front wings. Look at you spending all your money. I know. Well, Somebody's doing well. I'm, I'm in too deep now with this re chassis <laughs> job, and I keep finding. Told you, things. told you, it's never just a chassis. It snowballs. Always more. Well, this all started when because uh, I've been painting because the tub's been painted. I've decided to paint all the panels, and I went to peel a sticker off one of my front wings. It's got like a Union flag sticker at the bottom of the wing. Oh yeah. Uh, and the sticker came off, and it took the paint off, and the paint was also, it took like about five mil of filler out as well 
So now I've got a big hole in the bottom of one of my wings. So um, did you put the sticker on to uh, to uh, cover up the filler? No, someone has applied filler. Probably the same person who put all the filler in the tub, and then they've put a sticker over it. Um, nice. Presumably to you know smooth it out, and make it look not as obvious. So that was just another thing that's. Um, that needs attention really so anyway v8 so yeah. yeah they're making a comeback so says terry at hayward revive who i went and bought these wings from he uh he's in norfolk he does some really really nice defenders and series primarily yeah they've featured he's featured two or three of them on the covers of lrm has it? over the years over the yeah, years, yeah. What a, uh series 2a with an eco boost in it actually it was the most recent one um but he said a lot of his customers want v8s now Going back to petrol V8s. It's funny, isn't it? We've gone full circle. I mean, back in, back in I don't know, 15, 20 years ago, people were putting TDIs and ripping V8s out. Yeah, absolutely. The, re the reason is now, I, I think, is that, that that customer, that particularly he attracts probably, and, you know, defenders are now second and third cars in households. So the fuel economy isn't such a great thing. True. And yeah, maybe. Yeah, I anyone's going to say i think most people would agree with me if money was no object every land rover would be a v8 petrol potentially i i see off road obviously diesel will always win because you've got that instant low down torque and they don't care about water whereas unless you're going for like aftermarket management with mega squirt or whatever v8s are not keen on being dunked in no, muddy no. sludge but um but the percentage of people who are buying these higher end defender builds to yeah. go to the to go to the pub for a carvery on a Sunday or to, you know, go to the beach and yeah, Instagram it up. <laughs> yeah. You know, V eight all the way. Really? Yeah, I agree. And actually having driven various different series vehicles with various different engines, sound and performance aside, the V eight is so much nicer because it's so much smoother. It doesn't feel nearly as sort of agricultural and harsh as a TDI or an another diesel engine. Well, I mean you, you, you gave me this stat the other day, well that what Terry said the other day that you told me and uh, I said, Oh, you tried to convince me, didn't you, to take the TDI out of yeah. my well not it's not even in. <laughs> it's not even in yet. You can't remove it. You saw the stick of V eight and I was like, oh yeah, I know. It did get me thinking. I just think, yeah, for any... Well, I don't know. Everyone got their own preferences, haven't they? But it's interesting to hear that, yeah, people are steering more in that direction. And um, good on them, because I like a good V8. Yeah, definitely. I don't think uh, Greta Thunberg would uh, agree with you. Well, probably not, but... You're uh, not that bothered. On yeah. my travels around... When I went to see Terry, I also popped into Norfolk Garage, which you'll also know from Land Rover Monthly magazine, if you're a regular reader. Uh, columnist uh, Richard Hall that runs the place. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, good. Yeah, lovely old boy. He was very busy when I went, and uh, to be fair, I did turn up unannounced. So I had a quick look round, had a chat to him, and then off I went on my way. But uh, actually reminded me that as part of the rechassis, I'm changing all the engine and gearbox mounts on the Series 3, and he's actually had these uh special round rubber mounts developed and supposedly far better at isolating noise and harshness than other harder because a lot of rubber products now are quite hard they yeah. don't really last um so yeah i'm excited to see how much of a difference they make to uh the drive of the series three do you know i've had um readers of land of monthly come up to me at shows before and had uh, and have asked me is norfolk garage a real garage and I said, "Oh, really? Yeah. Do you know why? Do you know what that is? No, go on. So before you ever worked for LRM, we used to have um, the Mani Mike Manifold. Yeah, I remember. And he's, you know, the Manifold uh, Garage, and is it called the Manifold Garage? Okay, something like that, anyway. And uh, before I even worked for Land of Monthly, it was my go-to first bit I read, and it was a garage based in the Peak District, right? It, and there was an apprentice, and it was it was running for." Well, ever since the launch of LRM. I do remember it. Great, great um, thing. And it was uh, like, uh, and one day our old um, deputy editor, Richard Streeton, said, you do know it's not real. I was working for LRM at this stage. What? And I said, my favourite section of the magazine, as a newbie to LRM, this is back 13 years oh. ago, is um, my manifold. 
And he said, you do know it's not real, this don't you? This is groundbreaking. And I was like, what? Did you not know? No. No, it's not real. Shattering dreams. I know. I know. Unfortunately, to say it was creative writing based on around the garage that was real. So the apprentice, if I remember rightly, the apprentice who who worked for Mike Manifold in the at Manifold Garage was actually the guy writing about it from his perspective in the sixties. Oh my so word. it was a kind of a real garage, but it wasn't actually happening oh, there and then. Crikey. It was like finding out Emmerdale or EastEnders isn't real. <laughs> you know, some people get really engrossed in soaps, don't they? To yeah. the point where they, you know, it's who, that life, who, who it? shot Phil oh. Mitchell or something like that, yeah. you know, is a big headline. If finding that wasn't real. But then people have made the assumption that as the Mike Manifold thing ran its course and, and he left the magazine that Norfolk Garage isn't real, but it is actually a real garage happening. So everything he writes is actually happening. Everything in LRM is real. Well, it is now. It is, yeah. yeah. I don't have anything that's not real. Be real. It's mad. Yeah. I can't believe it. But I remember, I do remember that section. Yeah. It was really, really good. It was a great piece. Absolutely. But at least now people are reading genuine. Yeah. It's actually yeah. happening. And Norfolk Garage is definitely real, because as I say, I've been there and I've yeah, met yeah, it. Yeah. I, Richard Hall is a real man. A real man. A real man. <laughs> What else have we got? We must have some more uh, listeners that have got in touch. Uh, another fella called Mark's got in touch. He says, love the podcast and the magazine. This is another guy who doesn't actually own a Land Rover yet. So we're, we're reeling them in. We're getting them on. You do. You know what this means? No, don't say it. We have become. No, we haven't. No, I'm going to say it. Please, we're, no. we're, we have become influencers. Hi, I love the podcast and the magazine. I'm on the verge of Land Rover ownership, taking on an abandoned project my son started. That's pretty uh, cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've been reading the mag via an app and listening to the podcast, which I think is brilliant. I've worked out how to pay for a digital subscription online. Uh, oh, okay. So this he wants to um, to give it a, 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 basically he wants a bit of input into how he can subscribe. Is he's international? Basically, you've got. Well, a few options, haven't you? If you want to subscribe to the mag, you've got print subscription, which yep. you get a physical copy of the magazine through the post every month. You've got digital subscription, which I think you get slightly earlier than the print one, but it's it's all online. Um, you roughly give or take, yeah, it depends on the postal system as to where you live. Sure. Where, so digital will, will, yeah. Okay, go on. And then you've got exact, haven't you? Which is exact another, editions. Yes. Which is sort of like another digital service, but you get all the back issues as well, which is brilliant. All the way back, and I checked this because we said about exact last week, and it goes back to January 2015 issue. Wow. So you've got nearly 10 nearly, whole years. Nearly 10 years worth of Land River Monthly on there. So, um, and the great thing, so this isn't a plug particularly about exact editions, but say you were doing a job on your Defender and you wondered if we would featured it in the tech section. You could actually, it's searchable content. Yeah, exactly. Or, or you, I don't know, travel into Norway in your Land Rover. Type it in and see if any of that content comes up. We're not going to remember the last 10 years worth of the mag. No. Um, and that, But that does, and it's searchable content. So it's, it's in great value. It's a digital archive. We sound like we're selling this, but actually yeah. when you think about it what, what it costs, you're getting an awful lot of content for your yeah. money. Content with integrity. Exactly. So, anyway, aren't we influencers? No, we're not influencers and never will be. No. From my mind, I hate that word. Anyway. I right, think given, given what we're wearing today, we can influence people to wear check shirts. <laughs> <laughs> we are, like, coordinated today. Yeah, yeah. Good stuff. Anything else new with you? What no, you I'll tell you what, nothing new with me, but what I was going to say is um, we were talking about guests coming onto the podcast, weren't we? Yes, indeed. And we've got two or three... Line headline up. acts <laughs> coming onto the podcast, haven't we? Definitely, yes. Um, but interestingly, I, th- I thought, what about li- our listeners? You know, who would they have like? Them? No, well, if they want to. <laughs> I don't know, can you imagine a queue at the door? Just take people? over and we'll have a day off. Yeah. But yeah. No, who would our listeners want us to interview? Yeah, that's a good point. Because we don't want our listeners getting bored, me and you, rabbiting on about Land Rovers week in, week out, without, we need the third wheel. Aside from the vehicles, the one of the best things about Land Rovers in the Land Rover universe, is, if you like, are the number of incredibly interesting people 
exactly. personalities that actually have brought things along, you know, over the decades. And yeah, we'd be stupid to not get some of them on the podcast, wouldn't we? So email editorial at lrm.co.uk with your suggestions. Um, and if we can get them in, then we will. Yeah. And similarly, if you think... Don't recommend influencers. Oh, you, we are the only influencers in town. <laughs> <laughs> you can if you want. Yeah, I'm just being silly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're proud to partner with Adrian Flux, an insurance broker that specialises in covering all types of Land Rovers, including classic, ex-military, modified and Q-plated models. Adrian Flux offers a range of optional extras to make the policy your own and can provide cover for off-roading, green laning, agreed value and build-up cover. Plus, they even offer a discount of up to 15% for Owners Club members. Simply search Adrian Flux Land Rover Insurance for more information or call them directly on 0344 728 0417 for a quote. So, yeah, busy next month's looking busy for us. Spares days ahoy next month. Three of them in one month. I know, we spoke about these last week, but we're getting very, very close to the, to, uh, the largest... I reckon it's the largest Land Rover auto jumble. Land Rover and 4x4 Auto Jumble in the world. In the world. We advertise it as in Europe, but I don't know if there's a bigger one. I wouldn't have thought so. Six Between 600 and 800 traders yeah. selling all manner of Land Rover goodness. It's a brilliant day out. Even lawnmowers. You're in the market for lawnmower, aren't you? I actually am in the market for lawnmowers. Well, lawnmowers everywhere. Um, but... <laughs> yeah. You need a couple of milk churns as well. <laughs> And some rusty old signs. Yeah, but it's not, it's not just. The great thing about Newbury, uh, particularly, is you've got Land Rover, yes. You've got 4x4, yes. But all manner of vintage stuff as well. Yeah. So all the, all the old bits and pieces, agri-jumble, it's great. Absolutely. I can't wait. And contrary to, uh, you might think, oh, well, it's just the same stuff in different locations. Some of it is, like my manifolds. However, you do walk around and you go, wow, like I've not, seen this before there's fresh of course there is stuff you know every location is really really good there'll be traders there that have never ever been yeah it attracts all the overseas visitors as well they get the ferry across on the saturday they tend to camp over so they can they arrive with empty vans ready to load up a bit cheeky aren't they yeah but it's good though isn't it because they yeah but then again, you're not going to pop over from, like, Belgium first thing Sunday morning, are you? No, you really it's too early, too early at a start, but uh, it's, be, it's become kind of like a, a cult thing. Yeah. You know, we we just enjoy running it. Um, so if you've got, if you are a trader and you're listening, even if you're not a trader or, or deemed as a professional auto jumper, you might have a garage full of junk or a yard full of junk. Yeah. And you want to hit clear out. Book into Newbury as a trader. Yeah, absolutely. Sell it, make some money, and then go and use it to buy more. I've sold at Newbury a few times. In you don't really want well, even some of the stuff you accumulate yeah, with old because it's you don't realise just how much old old stuff you have from you know you might have owned various models or different vehicles and then you've bought bits for them and then you've sold the car and you've forgotten about them and then yeah it's the ideal time to convert all the, that stuff that you'll probably never use again into some decent money. No, definitely. Um, and then following on, we've got the Ripon event up in Yorkshire. It's great for the, the the northern part of England. Yeah. We get lots of people from Cumbria, Durham. And we mentioned in next year's exciting news yet, or are we keeping it under our hat for now? Next year's exciting news? Yeah. Keep that under your hat. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. We'll keep it under but, our hat. But um, yeah. one of the things, or all I will say is keep a weekend or two, or keep a weekend in August free. Okay. Yeah, yeah, but, we won't. Um, do, we won't. Yeah. Uh, well, you'll have to wait and see what we've got up our sleeve. But, but all tickets for next year's events will go on sale sometime mid to late November, I think. Okay, cool. But we've got to get this year's events done and dusted, and there's three of them. Yeah, so, absolutely. So uh, keep Ooh. checking out on our website. More excitement. We're off to the Land Rover Classic this weekend. I do you know I am actually really excited because I've never been. I, oh, I, I I don't think you, I can class myself as a full Land Rover enthusiast until I've actually been to JLR It's Christmas. so good. It's so good. To to if you've never been as a listener, uh, it's a sort of it's like a car show room out the front. You've, you, their latest editions, their special editions, they can kind of charge what they want, and people seem to queue up and buy them. 
they certainly are charging what they want. But yeah, yeah well, are they I mean, charging what they need? Because the true cost of a you know a business at the end of the day, they've got to turn a profit, haven't they? True. And well, they're certainly not having any trouble selling them. So yeah, there must be customers out there for them. Mm. But um, they've also got the collection out the back, which is racks and racks of prototype development special Land Rovers like Land Rovers that have been used in films G4 Camel Trophy do you reckon we'll get to go there I hope so I might just sneak off if we're not allowed and just have a little look yeah it is like okay. I've been around once before I was really lucky to um to go and have a look around when we did a feature on a, a car that they'd done actually so will we then we'll take some videos and some photos and stick them on our socials yeah yeah, yeah, definitely. So for people who listen to this can follow Land Rover Monthly on Instagram yeah. and Facebook. You'll put some stuff on there, right? Uh, YouTube as well. Put some I'm saying you'll do it because I'm not going to do it. No, I didn't think you would. But honestly, if you see pictures and videos of this place, it's it'll be on your list with must-go Land Rover destinations. Same as Dunsfold Museum. Yeah, it's such a cool place. Really, It's really almost cool. like you could draw a list of all the places you must see. If you're a Land Rover enthusiast, you must go to... Dunsfold, yeah, Jala Classic, absolutely. Red Wolf Bay, Red Wolf Bay. Have you yeah. been there? Never. Uh, uh, I have. Great have place. You? Yeah. Okay. I've driven on there. Oh really? When we bought those Land Rovers, what we called Ground Rovers, a thousand pound or less. Yeah. We yeah. drove there. Oh wow. And then took photos. Alice Cusip was there. I feel like I should go there. Not, See what's a lot about. happening. To be fair, so but it's not. It's nice to say you've been there. Yeah, de well, definitely, yeah. Well, that's it, isn't it? Eastner is, is on the, the list of places you should go. Eastner's brilliant. I've been lucky enough to go there. That's where we first met was Eastner, wasn't it? It was, actually, yeah. Do you yeah. remember? Oh. oh. No, I was obviously at You were the competitor, Rover. weren't you, at the time? Yeah. But what was interesting on that day, because that was their adventure day, wasn't it? Yeah. So, um, Eastner Explorer. Ex yeah. Have you still got your pack that they gave you? The little um, lighter thing in there and the... Oh, I'm not it's sure. Like, it's a, it I've got the mug. I've got the enamel Yeah, I've got the mug. Yeah, I've got the mug. Oh, I don't know if I've got the rest. I've got so, the notebook. I don't know about everything else. Yeah, there was like one of those lighters, you know, the flint yeah, lighter yeah. things that you spark and they make a campfire. We made fires and ate our lunch on them, didn't we? Do That's we right. We had that little Kelly Kettle thing and made That's a tea. It. But interesting, that day, wasn't it? So there were other influencers... <laughs> No, there was a few people from different magazines that weren't called Land Rover magazines, wasn't there? Yes. Um, as a kind of a, an explorer day. Great day. It was brilliant. Yeah. And um, we drove the 110s, didn't we, off-road. We off -road. But I noticed me and you did most of the driving and we had all of the other magazine yeah, members yeah, as passengers. They did a bit of driving, but we, we were the ones entrusted to drive across the... We had to build the bridges, didn't we? Yeah, uh, out of the big poles, like tie them together, poles. telegraph poles, um, tie them together, like Camel Trophy style, wasn't it? Basically, yeah. Drive across the ditch, but me and you we had tired, weren't we? Yeah, yeah. It wasn't a competition as such, but it was, uh, it but was fun. It was, yeah, it was cool. Yeah, it was one of the first highlights time. for me yeah. was, yeah, it was the first time we met. It was um, the Camel Trophy sign where they did the training for the Camel Trophy. That's the right, sign yeah. is still there, buried in the woods, isn't it? Of course it is, yeah. So cool. That. That's a real highlight for me in my So time. I think everyone should do Eastnor because that's a fantastic um, place to go. And actually... So that's the land of experience, obviously. Yeah, the it's the flagship one, isn't it? Um, Tell you where I, I really enjoyed, and I drove a Minerva uh, with... Somebody from Land Rover, I can't remember now, at the uh, their Solihull experience, right on the, by the factory. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. That was a great place to try, that was. Yeah, yeah. There was, um, what I was going to say, actually, just on about, on the subject of Eastner, obviously there's still people out there that think the new breed of Land Rovers are only good for driving up and down curbs. If you go to Eastner and you book a half day or a day's experience in anything, any of the new generation of Land Rover, so Defender, Range Rover, Range Rover Sport, Velar, Evoke, Discovery, Discovery Sport. You The range is quite uh it's quite diverse it, now, isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah. Um you will be blown away by what these cars do as standard on mostly like all terrains, I think, is the most aggressive tire they yeah. fit to them. Yeah, it's amazing, isn't it? Don't make them like they used to. Yeah, probably for good reason. They they have actually evolved off road. They are much more superior. Absolutely. Yeah, they just make everything well. They they flatter your driving. It is a complete novice. Yeah. The amount of technology in them now, they 
really do make off-roading accessible for everyone, which is kind of what I suppose they need to do, isn't it? If you need to drag a horse box out of a muddy field, if you've been to wherever and everyone else is struggling, you can just pop that's it in the mud and ruts and off you go. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so give respect where it's due, I would say. Mm. Where else have you got to go? Must do Land Rover destinations. There's got to be some other good ones up and down the country, surely. Yeah. Um, Phil? LRM live in May. Right? <laughs> you were, you were, so you were definitely, definitely not a Land Rover enthusiast unless you visited LRM live. I agree. Um, all the other shows are just mere imitations. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I think Newbury has got to be on there. Yeah, and actually, also, you know, getting up early in the morning, you know, kind of like, Newbury's a destination in itself, isn't it? Finney is just to go there, just to see the hive of activity. I think that 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 is that. And actually, yeah. you see a lot of people there. You know, you, you do see a lot of uh, familiar faces. You also see a lot of fresh faces there every year. And um, some people just go for a catch up with their mates and have a bacon roll and a cup of tea and then go home. They don't even buy anything. But mm, most people do. Yeah, most people do. It's quite cool actually if you hang around sort of like where the entrance and exit are. You see people doing like multiple runs to their vehicle with loads of stuff they've bought. You just think, yeah. Do you know what I like seeing? Wait, right? you always see a family of four, yeah, pushing a wheel and tire. Oh, that's iconic. Wheeling them along, right? That that I mean, we use that picture of marketing, don't we? It's always family, <laughs> yes. and I always say to them, "Oh, you're having a wheelie good time." <laughs> <laughs> oh, I bet they're just so it's, impressed. Just, by yeah, it all I mean, yeah, no, no, just look at me. Oh. There's always one member of the four, right? There's always four people. There's always one of the fa family. Different families, obviously. Not picking on one specific family. There's always one that can't steer the wheel. And they always tip it over. Well, can't keep up. And The thing with especially alloy wheels is the outer face is so heavy that they want to steer all the time. So oh, you've okay. got to be... Yeah. Do you know the best... Here's a top tip for you. If ever you're pushing a pair of alloy wheels together, yeah, so like you're rolling oh, them along... Yeah put them face to face and then they roll straight and true and you can tap it side to so side to steer it. steering in on each other. Yeah, exactly. Why not scratch the wheels? Only if you've not got proper tyres on, if you've got like rubber bands uh, on it. Oh, I see, yeah. But like Defender alloys have got plenty of sidewall, you wouldn't smash the faces together. No, oh, they are. Top tip. There you go, you're welcome. So if you do buy any wheels and tyres at Newbury or Mulvern... You or now know Britain, how to steer them. You can now look like a professional as you go past Steve as he, he keeps an eye out for people yeah. who bought wheels and tyres. It's always somebody else carrying an exhaust pipe. Yeah, big they, exhaust. They always look exhausted. <laughs> Please stop. <laughs> Please. I beg Is it, of you. Do you know what, right? So we were sitting here this time last week. Except that we finished our podcast at quarter to five and I said we're going to the pub, which incidentally we didn't, no. to shatter everyone's ideal of what we've been up to. It's now five to five oh, no. on a Friday night. Again. It's not that we leave this to the last minute or anything. But no. We've had a lot of meetings today. It's been a meeting heavy day, hasn't it? Yeah, it's important stuff. It is very important. Exciting stuff for the future of Land Rover. And, yeah. And, you know, the working enthusiasts. On, working on the finest Land Rover content. In yeah. the world. In the world. Well, we like to think so anyway. And we can influence more people. Talking of oh, on. the finest Land Rover content in the world, let's have a product of the week. Oh, it's about it's about time. No, uh, yeah. Because uh, you did two last week, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, you did two this week then. <laughs> no. Got, you just dropped me in it. I haven't even got products of the week open. <laughs> uh, I'm not saying that we're not, uh, we don't pre-plan these or they're not off the cuff at all, but... Um, they're, they're not. But yeah, you did two last week because I forgot the week before. Yeah. So we're back. Great products as well. The uni I, I, cho I chose well. You did choose well. The universe has re synced itself now. So uh, It has. It has. So, product of the week. Definitely not filling for you, Steve. Come on. Yeah. Well, I'm just gonna, I'm just making it harder for you because you're, <laughs> you're the one that brought it up. Right. Okay. So, we've spoken a little bit about remaps on this podcast a few times, haven't we? We have. And the transformation they can make to the drive of your Land Rover, generally your diesel engine Land Rover. Well, now Empire Tuning are offering a remote remapping tool. So you can actually remap your Land Rover at home. You haven't even got to go anywhere. How do I, uh, that's really useful, actually. Well, yes. So essentially, you, you'd still buy the remap off your chosen tuning company. 
in this case I would assume Empire Tuning as they're selling it. This thing's called an Alien Tech Powergate 4, right? So it's compatible with all Land Rovers and Range Rovers that can be tuned electronically, normally through OBD2 diagnostic port. You plug this thing in, you're obviously in contact with your chosen remapper. They send you, sorry, you send them your vehicle's configuration file from the engine ECU. They upload their file, then they send it back. Straight up the OBD port into your car's brain, more power and torque. Really clever, isn't it? I think so. I mean, this is the first one of these of its sort of kind that I've seen. And actually, this is a, an interface, so it actually works using um, Android and iPhone phones rather than being like a standalone laptop. Okay, anything. really good. Quite a cool piece of technology, I think you'll agree. And uh, yeah, probably revolutionises really the way you, people are going to tune Land Rovers, I would have thought. So go on, hit me. How much is it? Uh, it says from £324. Sounds pretty reasonable to me. You would have to speak to Empire because obviously your remap file itself would be on top of that, I would imagine. This is I for the uh, the interface tool itself, but pretty cool technology. Things have come a long way. No, no they definitely have. Uh, but yeah, speak to Empire. Uh, you know I've got an Empire tune, tuning or, or tune on my uh, TD5. Yes, indeed. Because I had it done at... In fact, I still need to uh, put it in the magazine uh, and write about it. Yeah, Jules done it. Um, uh, LRM Live. LRM Live. Well, what happened? What happened? Wow, wow, wow. Is I drove there, I my drove there, turned up my camper drone, didn't I? And yeah. just thought, oh, it's, it's so flat. And um, it towed remarkably differently on the way back with that remap. Yeah. Because I said, you know, I towed that trailer, da 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 da, and I want to just crack on a bit more, and it's transformed it. It really, really has. Good stuff. Um, other tuning companies are available. Of course, of course. But, uh, so you pay your money, you yeah, take your choice. absolutely, but I, I, I can only vouch for uh, the one I've currently got. Absolutely. So, off the back of product of the week, what do we have featured? Hang on, I said two products. We don't need two. I'll do right. another one next week. I don't like them. God, being very needy today, Steve. <laughs> right. It's because it's five o'clock on Friday night. <laughs> <laughs> as much as I love talking, uh, I've done enough. We're not done yet, okay? Calm okay. down. All right. Right. I'm feature of the you. week. Yeah. We're going for a classics feature this week. Uh, Gary Pugy's been very busy putting the, the finest classic content together for uh, for your enjoyment. And this one is the first Series 2 ever to go to Australia. Okay. It's been discovered. It was bought by a man as part of a job lot. He didn't even realise what he was buying. Uh, it turns well, out... He accidentally bought a Land Rover. He accidentally bought this one, yeah. Oh, that... He knew he was buying a Land Rover. He was, he was buying a lot of Land Rovers, I think. Oh, OK. But um, that happened to be in the job lot. This was in with the job lot. Oh, no job lot of Land Rovers. Yes. Right, yes. not just a job lot of random stuff. No, no, no. Um, and then he looked at the, the numbering on it and he went, this is a bit special. And it is a bit special. So, uh, back in the day... Uh, the ex the uh, Australian Army were sort of auditioning for a new military vehicle, so they got various samples of different brands and manufacturers in, and then they put them through a series of tests, and uh, then they made their choice of what they went for. And again, without giving too much away, because we want you to buy the magazine, we want you to buy the magazine. To be perfectly honest, um, yeah. this was the first demo, if you like, Series Two ever to make it into Australia, and it's actually remarkably complete. It does need you know, work, it's it's seen a life, but yeah, what a cool thing to happen across. Yeah, like, really nice. From, yeah. You know, a lot of people spend, you know, many years going after a vehicle that special and he just sort of just came to him. As we've already discussed before, that does tend to happen, doesn't it? It does. So yeah, check that out in the latest issue. Very, very cool indeed. So next week will be more products. Yeah. More we'll features. We won't forget to do it, I promise. Uh, yeah, I think Steve is like crawling up. He's 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 keen to make him. What's the time anyway? I don't know what we've been going for. Slightly shorter podcast this week because we want to go home. But um, <laughs> well, yeah, we'll 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 report back, won't we? After we've been to yes, because we need to um get ready um for Sunday. Yeah, we do. Yeah, and uh, go and have a look. We're going around there. And we'll, we'll, we will will report back. I've got some welding and stuff to do tomorrow. I'm going to crack on and do a bit more on Series 3. Yeah. Mm. I'm not doing anything to my Land Rover. 
really. Yes, that was. Oh no! It's, oh, it's mate, it's, done it. Right on that yeah. bombshell. I'm just about to get in it to go home. <laughs> yeah, might I hope it's going to make it. Yeah, home. might not start now. I've said that. Well, we'll see. Cool. But, uh, yeah, I think that is it, and we will uh, catch you up very soon. Yes. See you next week. Bye for now.